So you might have stumbled upon this Adventure Communist Mission Tracker and you're wondering, what the hell does it do? So the Mission Tracker does a couple of things. It shows you your upcoming missions, how many missions are in a rank, what the rank completion reward and what researchers unlock, how long, this is a very important one, how long it can take via a calculator and all the other good stuff that's um, like beneficial to your progress. So lots of like more in-depth and active players in the game will use this tool for um, you know progressing well and strategizing. So immediately to anyone who plays the game, they can go and look and see, oh, look at all these missions. I can plan ahead. So if I have a collect cards mission, I can save my free for this mission if if you have a free available and your next and that's like your next mission. So I'm going to walk through every single itty bitty piece of this tool and I'm going to try my best to explain it clearly to any new player. And it's I've played the game for about a year now, at least maybe a year and a half. So even the things that I say might not make any sense. And I'm sorry if that happens. So yeah, so the first thing like mentioned, I might follow this list here, but um, when you're working through the event and you're not using the tracker because you don't entirely need to use the tracker immediately, um, is that you can just click on the missions and they'll go up here into this little completed box. And that's where you can like say, oh, I'll complete this mission. I, I haven't unlocked railways yet, but I've spent my dark science and I've you know, owned the horses and now I have to unlock railways and now I've unlocked railways and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the um, completed missions will go up here so that you can just see and it will show your current missions. You might not have it in the same order, but if you reload your game, you will have it in this order. And of course, if you misclick, then you can just click on the mission again and it'll go back into your current missions here. And if it's in the way, so you get like really, really deep into the event and it's kind of in the way, you can just hit the toggle button and it will just hide it. So you can just it'll disappear again and you just hit it again if you, you know, if you want to go back. So I'm going to explain a couple of the header menus and all that now. So um, we're l looking at a Comrade Cowboys event. So this will have all the information about Comrade Cowboys, obviously. And um, so the first tab here is just, you know, the title and the in-game like description. And um, you might want to go here at the start just to keep a mental note for some things. The most important one would be the airdrops. So if you don't know how airdrops work in this game, they're a neat mechanic that give you free resources based on usually if it's if you watch an ad but sometimes you'll get resources for not watching ads they just come automatically and you can only get a certain amount of a uh, specific resource within your current cycle so your current cycle will last for 12 hours and it, when it runs out it will start again when you open the event again after the 12 hour cycle has ended so for example if i have opened the game at nine o'clock in the morning and my this is a new cycle let's say i will have all my resources reset to their the, the values that are put in here and so if i claim all my ads here these ones here i cannot get any more of these until 9 p.m onwards so if i log in at 10 past my cycle is now set to 10 past 9 and therefore my cycle will reset at 10 past 9 in the morning. So for airdrops on this event and currently in these balances I think there are 6 of 4. So for the comrade airdrops for ads there's a 50% chance of them appearing and you can only get 6 of them per cycle. For dark science you can only get 4 of them per cycle and comrades there's a 10% chance but you can have an infinite amount of non-ad resources and same for this one here. You obviously, according to this list, you cannot get any dark science without watching an ad. And there's also a option to purchase the golden airdrops in the game. And this will start at uh, five, six US dollars and it will decrease in price per day after the event starts, like it says there. So if it's on the second day, the first day it will be $6, the second day will be $5, the day after that will be $4, etc. onwards. And for packs, this is for um, like actual currency, like the golden airdrops. And this will have like, you know, resources if you want to spend money on the event. 
So every event will have a starter pack with a titanium, 100 gold, and 2,500 dark science. So you can see the rank 4 bundle is when you reach rank 4, you will see this bundle appear to you. And you can buy this bundle if you want to buy it for some reason. And then once you reach rank 7, you will only get this bundle, and then the next bundle disappears. And if you want to go for a whale run and buy every single one, that's the total cost for everything is at the bottom. Alright, I'm going to move on to the next header now. This is the resources slash industries page. So this is just like all the industries slash generators that you will see throughout the whole event. There's not very much to read about, but um, I would use this if I'm about to unlock an industry and I don't know how much the industry is going to cost in terms of like cattle because like these are the three headers. Um, so if I'm going to unlock frontiers, I'm going to check if I have enough cattle, if I can buy a single frontier um, once I unlock it. So when you click on any of these, it will say like the cost, how much it reduces, and and how, when it unlocks, what, when the, the researcher for automating it unlocks. And if there is, um, whoops, if there is a guaranteed copy, what mission is it? So that's um, a little helpful one. Um, if this is a little confusing to you, um, just imagine that at the end of the progress bar, there's just a 22 when you unlock this, and then like, and then you add on the multipliers for like your power and your global production and etc. Um, and also, if it doesn't make sense, then just ignore this, <laughs> ignore the each outputs. Um, that's usually when it's like your researcher is at full bar. Yeah, so I'm gonna explain the last two here before like as one before I explain this one up here and this is just a little drop down menu. So um, these are your researcher cards and this is where you, this is usually helpful for calculations which I'll explain later. And so when you open your researchers like menu, um, you can just look at your, your game and just say, okay, this card is at like level six, this card's at level six or five, this one's at four or five. And uh, this, I have this. If you have um, the propaganda boost the times two propaganda boost, that's what this does. It took me a while to figure out that one. And say like you have VAP at one. Um, yeah, you can use that for calculations. Like like I said, I'll explain later. And this is the trades menu. So you can either just when you're calculating a mission, you can just put in the CPS number, which you'll see later, or you can get it to calculate the CPS for you. So if, let's say I have um bully at three and I have this guy at like three and I have my latest trade. So this is the next trade cost. When you open the trade menu, it will say like, I don't know, 50 NN. That's what you put in here. So you have 50 NN or why is it telling me I can't do that? <laughs> yeah, so I was trying to um, work with this and for some reason it's not working. So let's pretend that this is how the trades work, even though this will probably never happen. If you have your trades like this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but that's just um, a really poor example of what I'm trying to explain. Um, I'm too stupid to figure out why this is not letting me do what I wanted to do. But I really hope that does not happen to you. You can easily just ask in the Discord server if you have an issue. That's an, um, something to remember is that the owner of the mission, the current owner of the mission tracker, Enigma, he will, he's open to hear any bugs or things that need to be changed. So if you just message him, he'll, he'll be happy with trying to help you out on it. Okay, so let's have enough of the fluff now. Let's get on to actual calculations because this is what people use the tracker a lot for. So I'm actually going to use a motherland mission for this so I can use like accurate numbers and all that. So I'm going to use this mission here because I have it. I have 36 AAAA. Um, I know the actual reason why I haven't done it yet is because I haven't unlocked the lasers. But let's. I'm just using this as an example. So the first thing you want to do is you want to check all your cards. So you just want to like scroll through all the cards and just see. I have this card at 8 because I already have this. Let me just reset my data so that I can just go along with it. And um, so this guy is at eight and this card's at eight. This is a lot less tedious in events because you have less commons to deal with. There's less cards in general to deal with. So you wanna go through every single common and make sure 
they are the right level the copy count does not matter just have it at the the level that you actually have your like the card at and then don't forget like all the rares and all that so i have um loaf cut at 10. Okay, yeah, I've checked on my cards and I've seen that they're all accurate. I'm 99.9% .9 sure they are accurate at least. So I want to go back to my generators and I'm just going to type in the number that I see in the generators. So I'm going to put my I have 22.37 SSS miners and I'm just going to go through every single industry that I have unlocked. And um, if you're if they're moving quickly, just like mentally pause them or like put it in average number say if it's going up really quickly and it might be up at like making a million every second or something I don't know um, and it's at 350 just like I don't know bring it up to 400 Okay, now that I've put in the, the information that I can see in my game, I'm going to then input. So these parameters here is like um, how much ore I have. So I have 91.23ZZZ. Uh, Oops. This will only really be important if you need to buy something and you are like resource limited. Usually I don't fill this out. But um, and then this is the mission. The mission progress is how much you've made on the mission. So I can see that it's 12.57ZZZ uh, and that's out of 30, 36 AAAA. And then number of comrades, this will really only be useful if you're comrade locked or you are both industry and comrade locked or industry and resource locked, kind of switching between them maybe. So. For here, there's a normal comrades. This is the amount of comrades you have on you right now. So I have six B. I just hit six B there, and if I open up the trades menu, this meant this thing here, like I mentioned earlier, is your CPS count. This is just basically overrides what you have in here, so I don't need to put in the information for all this. This just makes my life easier. So my CPS is CPS is comrades per second, by the way. Uh, twenty three point seven two million. That's per second. So these buttons here are your simulation and all that. So an important thing to know about this game is to utilize offlining as much as you can. So if you offline, you will gain like double the resources than you would online. Grant there's buildup. So this can be exponential to your progress. And the other option is to auto buy the deepest generator. That basically means just hold your finger down on the, on the bottom one while you're online so that means if you're offline you can't do that so that's why I kind of graze it out so if I auto bought the deepest generator which is the oh, I missed that bit I have B there and um, if I auto buy that it will take me 22 hours and 27 minutes and if instead I offline to get this mission finished um, it would be 19 hours now I know the actual reason why is because I, I don't have my laser drills yet but so in 19 hours, the, the tracker thinks that according to the information you've provided for it, your mission will be finished in 19 hours if you just don't open the game. And if it's for an event, then don't open the event for 19 hours. Usually, if you're above five hours, that usually means you should probably work around the other missions instead, because that's a long time. And you could have gotten progress on other missions. So if you have other production missions, calculate them as well. And and to see which one's the more beneficial. And it could be based on your card count, maybe your commons or maybe your rares are under leveled, or you don't have enough copies of anything, you have a really crap RNG, which is your luck. So yeah, just compare and contra contrast. It's just a calculator. Actual strategies should be asked by people, in my opinion. <laughs> I don't think I haven't seen a bot that gives me strategy yet but you know the future is now I suppose um, another thing is when you say you close that 
um, it will have this. So this will be, the tracker says that this mission should be finished at 6 p.m., like almost like 20 past six tomorrow in the afternoon or evening. And yeah, well, that's, that's useful for if you're bad at adding up hours like me, and I just look at this instead. And the second thing is if you press import counts, it will import it based on your last, I think it's your last calculation, I'm pretty sure. And then you can just hit offline and check again. I think that's everything covered. And um, there's a couple of small things. And um, this menu here, if you just want to, let me go back to Cowboy. If I'm like up at rank 20 and I've only, or say 15 and I've only just opened the tracker for the first time in this on this computer or something I can just hit select rank and then press 15 and it will give me up to there um, it auto completes two missions for you so you just you know always check which missions and just say like I haven't done that one and I haven't done that one yet so I'll just click them and put them back in and if you just want to restart again then you can just hit the reset button and this is the airdrop information so basically what this is saying is if you get a resource drop at rank two, it's basically 10 minutes and 20 seconds worth of resources. And that's two minutes, etc. And it's just um, a large table. You don't have to use this, but if you're just curious, you can have a look at that. And that's the same for the capsules. This is more, a little bit more advanced. This is all the weight for like the contents in it. So at rank say 13, you'll have 34 cards in a plastic capsule guaranteed commons, guaran two guaranteed rares, and that much science, and that much trophies. So that's just a little thing if you if you want to look at the more nitty gritty information, that's, um, that's useful. And uh, lastly, there is the schedule. So this is all the upcoming events um, according to the data that has been collected from uh, like balance files, basically. So I would probably like accept the information all the way up to maybe this many month events in because this can change at any moment. We're not 100% sure because like occasionally it's been overwritten with um, say a long event or a new event that has like quirky times or for this month where we have no minis at all. So that's been completely different from past. So you can see here it's just straight weekend events and then if you just want to see every single event balance no matter whenever it is you can just go to this menu here and just click on it and just press view and tracker so you can open this crap event and like you're in override mode so this is only temporary progress but you can just look and see what the missions are there for this event and yeah I think that's about it yeah, so that is the Adventure Communist Mission Tracker. I think I've covered everything that you need to know if you want to figure out how to use this thing. Um, I strongly suggest using this for events when you have the time. Sometimes it's a bit tedious to add in all that data, so I would do it ever so often. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I know a lot of people might have needed this, especially new players, so I hope this is beneficial. Um, so yeah, peace.